I know it sounds like a wrestling thing. Aaron, how are you today? I'm very well, and I do not know any wrestling moves, so I'm very sorry. I know, but that's how you introduced yourself to me when we met a couple I years know. ago. And I, I, you, if there's, uh, you guys got cool names. There's Maverick, and you are the two that I remember all the time because you're the Shermanator and Maverick. And I go like, you know, I know all Maverick's the jobs I don't remember. Handle. Yeah, he's definitely got a good handle, yes. and it wasn't anything to do with transportation. No, I think it's Top Gun. I don't know. I just like his hair. He's always the best dressed guy in the office. Yeah. Let's talk about you. Forget Maverick. We'll get to him in another interview. Uh, so tell us what's going on. You're the recruiter. How long have you been doing the recruiting for Bison? I have been here almost three years. Okay. Best three years of my life. Yeah? You enjoy yeah. it? Yeah. I have over 21 years recruiting. Yeah, so you've been in the business before. Um, and when I joined Bison, really opened up my eyes to, you know, um, a different way yeah. to recruit. And, the, um, you know, the, with the driving positions, there's a lot to learn with the driving. So there's position. different styles of recruiting. You just so so before Bison, and I don't know because you're you're a nice person, so you probably had this style all the way. But you've seen you've seen other recruiters where they're very forward or they're they're very aggressive trying to get somebody on, um, to the point of lying. I'm sure we've seen that all over the years. We won't get into that. So so what you you've got a style now, and is it easier at a place like Bison where you've got you know, they've got a good name already. It's, you don't have to maybe work so hard or well, do you find it more? You know my, my core values when, as a recruiter, um, only became more highlighted when I came to Bison right. because Bison was doing exactly what, what I felt is the mm. right way to recruit. Right. You know, honesty is the best way. So mm. I'm very honest with my candidates that have applied, yeah. um, answering any questions that I can, mm. you know, I don't ever, we never sugarcoat anything yeah. because what's that going to do when they come on board and we've, yeah. we've lied to them for something. Yeah, so yeah. no, like I very much talk about our culture here Yeah. Um, because it is something that a lot of the drivers company or owner op that I've heard they're leaving their, yeah. their companies because the way they're being treated. So, so culture is a big word. It's a broad word. I mm -hmm. talk about culture a lot of times too. What does that do as far as, what is the culture at Bison? I mean, I know it's a safety culture because I, you know, I, I know a lot of the management team here. So um, I know that you guys are very safe. Um, you've got your right to decide program, which allows mm -hmm. the driver to be kind of in control. Tell us what else you see from the recruiting side. From my side of things, um, it, it's important to kind of paint a little bit of a picture, if you can, yep. of what it's going to be like to work at Bison if, if right. you come to Bison. So... You know, when I talk about this is a great big family, we are. Yeah. You know, when the driver comes in the door and he's not sure where to go or who to ask yeah. or something, ask the first person you see, we're yeah. going to help you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's an open concept. Yeah. You can walk anywhere within yeah. this terminal. But the celebrating of drivers, that's what's the important piece. Yeah, I, mean, I see a lot and of as that. as much as you talk about it to an applicant, I have them come up to me a couple of weeks after they started 
I get what you meant. Yeah. I feel it. I yeah. feel like I'm part of the family. Yeah. You know, when there's um, a driver that's hit 125,000 safe miles driven, they're celebrated just yeah. like a driver who's hit 1 million miles yeah. safe driving. Yeah. yeah. And so those drivers are feeling like they're part of a company and yeah. what they do is valued. And then that in turn, um, when they're actually in the truck, they feel proud yeah. of what they're doing. And, mm. you know, if you've come on as a company driver, a year and a half you've been in and you're like, you know what, I want to now become an owner operator. Yeah. That's an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's something that buys and promotes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. You, you sound just, like you take care of them like like a mom would take I care do. of their children. Because you say that. I, I've heard you say that not just that now, but in the past you said, you know, uh, when I bring on my guys or, when, you know, my, you know, it's almost like they're your kids, they right? Yeah, you know? and I always tell them like, okay, so my recruitment piece is done. You know, you've now finished orientation. You're starting to drive. Don't forget about me. Yeah, yeah. You know, pop in, say yeah. hi. I yeah. have them come to me a lot of times, too, because they just, mm. they're not sure where to ask for something. Yeah. And I'm that familiar face. Yeah. But it is important to me because um, what I'm saying to a driver, I want them to feel like, okay, this is really what's happening. Yeah. And when, if they can trust what I'm doing in, in my process as a recruiter, yeah. then they're just going to even buy into it more. Right. You know, with Bison. Yeah, yeah. That, so now... Do you ever check with them? Because this is the thing. Recruiters are known for telling us one thing, and then they get into operations and on the road, and you know it's something else. And so do you ever check and go, is it what I told you at the front, you know, uh, or, or the other way around? Do they yep. come to you and say, hey, thanks, you know what, you're actually doing what you yep, said you Yeah, absolutely. Doing. We check in a couple of weeks after you start. We check in right. 30 days. We check in 60 days. Right. So it's a constant check-in to make right. sure that, you know, what you came on board to do, is what you're actually doing. Right. Um, if you had any concerns at all, that's when you let me know the concern, yeah. and then we try to rectify that as soon right. as possible. Right, right, right. So you must have to know everybody's job base. Like, you must have to know, have a knowledge of dispatch, knowledge of operations, because you're telling them at the beginning, here's how it's going to work, or here's how, you know, you're going to be dispatched or whatever. And then they come here, and they actually get dispatched, and they're going, okay, yeah, that matches what she said, you know. So um, so what kind of driver are you looking for now? Um, I know it changes. You know, uh, sometimes it's we're looking for the new people. Sometimes we're looking for the experienced people. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of that goes by how freight is going. The economy is up and down right now. Freight's a bit slower. So what type of driver is Bison well, looking for right now? For us out here in the east, you know, it's it's crazy. I'm crazy busy. Yeah. Um, a lot of company driver positions. Yeah. Um, so I'm really looking for qualified company. Coming from where? Are they coming from other companies? What? You, just in general, no name any. Are they coming from schools? Are they coming from other companies? No, other or, companies. So they're companies. experienced. So they're experienced. They're, yeah, they're experienced as our drivers. Okay. Um, typically, we would like minimum two years. Okay. Um, you know, you have one solid year driving experience, cross-border. Right. Um, we travel Highway 17 a lot. Yes. And so that is a requirement with us, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of positions as well require a fast card. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can help guide you to get your fast card okay you know, for for those positions right. but yeah right now big push on cross-border company okay um with experience um we have a few positions as well like out of montreal because i don't just hire for ontario okay i also do um on board for um montreal okay um in montreal we've had city positions okay um and then we've had positions between like say montreal or Quebec and Ontario okay. um, type positions, but for the most part, it's cross-border. Okay. So Highway 17, if you've been traveling Highway 17, minimum one year, minimum one year <laughs> yeah. cross-border, um, come to see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the cross-border, where would they be going? Cross-border here, and I mean, there's a border, <laughs> the border is very long along Canada and U.S. Uh, are they never coming home if we send them out to Buffalo, or no, are they come back got, that night, or what are we looking got, at? Um, like, rounders uh, pennsylvania we've had okay. buffalo rounders so you know if you have a young family at home and you don't, don't want to be out more than like two days yeah um you're out two back to third um those are typically our short haul right um you know if you are a driver that likes to for whatever reason be away for long periods of time mm. we do have positions where you're out and you're resetting on the road okay so uh, you're out 14 days. You know. Is there a specific requirement, or it's whatever the driver is interested in? 
Well, like if, if I if I sign on with you, am I, am I expected? And I uh, when I drove, I never wanted to be gone that long, so I always used to say eight days. I'm willing to go if eight days, which you know come home a little bit on a weekend, but I don't want to be gone to California. I don't want to. I had kids at the time and stuff, so I um I, I elected to do the short hauls, the Pennsylvanias and stuff, and I could go all week, but I wanted to come home. Is there that option here, or is it all long? Oh no, we um. If you go on to our website to see the different positions, yeah. there really kind of is something for everybody. Yeah. Um, so it'll stay in there, say Midwest. Right. Right. So those are the short haul positions. So you're yeah. out, let's say maybe three to five days. Sure. Um, but it does state right in our job postings. Everything that you kind of want to know is right yeah. there. Tells you, you know, where you're going to be going. Does dispatch see the job post? I'm not saying you're. The, I mean, there's many there's many drivers that have gone in the companies. And they say, and maybe they do that for two weeks, and then oh, we need you to go out here. Um, I've been always lucky in my career. I've never been pushed to go out that way. But no, I mean, if you've applied for a specific position, pretty much you're doing that position. Okay. Only if there is like a, a delay in freight or something like that to make sure that you're going to get your miles in. We'll say, hey, are you opposed to doing this one right. trip because we don't have the freight ready for you for your right. regular one? Right. Um, so that's typically how it works. But yeah. you, when you're coming in for um, a short haul position, um, it, it, it's a position where you know exactly where you're going to be going. Right. So okay. Pennsylvania, Michigan, you know. Um, do you find do you find that hard from a that drivers either get bored of doing that? I mean, I've been on everything from dedicated to open board, and dedicated freight is great. I can plan a barbecue. I know I'm going to be home next Saturday, whatever it is. But after a couple of years of that, boy, you're going, you know, I'd like to see something different, you know? Yeah, and so then if you see an, an internal job posting catches your eye and you've been in your position more than six months, yeah, yeah. you can go and talk to your fleet manager and say, okay. hey, I just saw this. You know, this is really a better position for me with my family, right. I'd like to apply for that. Yeah. And that's, that's welcomed. Okay. Right. So you're not brought in here and no, you can't do this. this, yeah. this, this. Or if the freight dries up in that particular area where you're, you're not, okay, you're done now. We don't need you anymore. You know, you yeah. transfer. Them. And again, that's something that I talk about right from when I'm talking with an applicant, Yeah, you know, of once you've been here six months, if you see something different, you want to apply to, we support that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things, you know, that we do. But open board, that's where you're going. You right. could go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could be doing. Which I encourage. I encur certainly encourage new people, even two years. I don't think you should be undedicated until you're like five years in because you need to learn all of those different areas, understand why you do or do not like them. Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons to yeah. each, you know, like yeah. with, with long haul. Yeah. Obviously, if you're going straight to Texas. Yeah. You're not stopping really anywhere else yeah. except for your regular stops, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. When you're doing short haul, you know, I, I think in some ways it gives them more experience um, because you're stopping more places, right? right? So it's that um, once you're going to deliver or pick up, it's maneuvering. It's, yeah, yeah. you know, some tight spots where it's, but you're gaining more experience as you yeah, go along, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So the really... Apply now. There's so many different positions yeah. that fit your lifestyle. Yeah. You know, we want you here. How many drivers would you, just roughly, you may not know the exact number, bring on in a year? I don't know if it goes by terminal or if that's a company-wide um, thing that you guys work with. But, like, how many, how many drivers would you be looking for for the Mississauga terminal here? Well, for right now, I think I have over 30 different postings. Yeah. Some of those postings need three or four drivers per. Right. Um, for instance, this month alone, I've brought in, I think, 13 okay. drivers. Um, December, January is typically slow, but I'm, like, busting out now. Yeah. So, you know, we have orientation every single week. Okay. It's here in our terminal. It's three days. Yeah. Um, it goes over everything that you need to know. Um, part of the orientation is you're going to meet with your fleet manager right. on day one. Okay. And you'll talk to your fleet manager. They'll talk to you about the position. So you really have a better understanding. Yeah. Because they're the experts. Yeah. Right. We take you into the shop. We show you, um, you know, company drivers. Um, you know, if you had a repair to do on your truck, yeah. um, you can look online 
and see the progress right. instead of trying to phone, 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 yeah, phone. Yeah. So we're trying to make things as proficient nice. as possible so that the drivers, because your time, when you're mm. stand, idle, sitting idling, you're not making your yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. We want you out there. What's what's your what's what's their driver reaction? I don't know how much you use that or if that's available to people coming on, but uh, where they can do their own dispatch. I know you have that op- that board where they can pick their loads. I think certain ways or something like that. That must to me. I'm still excited about that as a, a former driver who didn't have that. Is that something that's a selling point for Bison being able yeah, to choose their loads? Yeah, we talk about it all the time. Um, again, it sets us aside from other transportation companies. Yeah. All the different things that we do, the right to decide policies we were talking yeah, yeah. about. Um, you know, if you know two weeks from now that your daughter has a dance recital and you have to be there, yeah. you can put yourself a home note in. Right. And that way they know to have you planned back right. for that day. Yeah. So we work with you to make sure that any milestones that you're wanting to hit, yeah. if we can get you to that milestone, we're going to get you there. Wow, that's exciting. That's exciting. And I think that's what makes... Um, makes it the the drivers end up applying yeah all the different things that i talk about in the start right they get excited about it yeah we also guide them through the process yeah you know a lot of drivers aren't good with computers yeah so to fill an application out can be daunting right i'm like you know what are you going to be around pop in yeah here's a paper one you know when you come in bring your ids with you right we try to do it as best as possible to make it comfortable yeah, for everyone yeah. yeah that's a that's amazing have you seen any of ones that came in fairly new and now they're like million mile i don't know if you've been here long enough how long does it take to maybe have three hundred thousand if they go up to may not be at the million but i've hit some of those benchmarks like that's got to be satisfying for you to see that it is you know. it is um there's a couple of drivers that i that i can think of um one of them he came in i think it was two years ago yeah. driver finishing program he was so good that um, he started on his own a little bit earlier than right. normal yeah. because it was holding him back. Yeah. Um, he does crazy miles with us. He's very safe. Yeah. Yeah. So he's really close to hitting those milestones wow. for wow. sure. Yeah. But, yeah, it's great. You know, um, yeah. you've talked to her, Jody, yeah. Jody yeah. Doncaster. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she's another one. I mean, she last in 2023, she was the um, company driver of the year right. for their East. Yeah. You know, so... Women did trucking. Yes. Yeah. You're looking for a yeah, lot of women. If you're a woman, apply to apply, apply to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're, <laughs> you're you're still mostly van freight and all that, so they wouldn't be. You got ref, van refrigerated and heated freight, right? Yeah. You don't have a flatbed or no. anything like that. No. So there's no tankers, so they'd be able to do that. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm interested in how I know uh, how would I know they could look on your website. But there must be – Do you, I see you guys once in a while at events. You don't go to a lot of the events, though. <coughs> like I'll see you at the big ones like Truck World or yeah. something like that. Um, what I have found is I get more traction making, I want to say, the cold calls yeah. than standing at a job fair. Right. Because you're not really getting the drivers that are right. looking. Yeah coming in yeah you're getting the ones that are always <laughs> revolving they always seem to be looking i see the same ones at every job fair, you know? or one of ten yeah they never seem to get a job yeah. <laughs> i don't know why so for me i prefer looking you know six months ago you applied six months ago but i didn't have what you were looking for right i now have what you're looking for and i called you okay guess what I now have that job. Right. Are you still interested? Yeah. Okay. And then it's through there, it's word of mouth. Like right. what Bison is saying is true. Right. It's not a bunch of up front to get me in the door. Yeah, yeah. All the way through, they follow through on what they're saying. Yeah. And so that to me is more valuable than standing at a job fair so you're not calling them every second day because i'm looking at my phone i go it's the shermanator again she really wants so you're waiting you 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 have kind of a tickle file if you know that person said they want this and you just leave them alone until that comes up like if you know if you were you you know you were looking for a team position um you and your partner and i didn't have any available i have them now right so i'm reaching out hey i do have this team position now and here's what it is you know Talk it over with your team partner, and sure. if it fits for you guys, then then let me know. 
Right. Um, you know, and if I don't hear from you in a week or two, I might just send a little, hey, just wondering if you saw my email or, right. or if you listened to my voicemail. Right. And then if I don't hear back from you, no, I'm not going to harass you. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, some people do. Like, if they really want somebody on there, you know, um, and drivers uh, get chosen all the time. See, and I, I, think you, I think you know somebody that you can do that with and somebody that you really can't yeah, do that with, yeah. right? So, um, but typically I've not had any real issues. Like, if I've reached out to you six months later, you've responded back, oh, my God, yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, what yeah. do I need to do to get on board? Right, yeah, yeah, no, it, cha it changes. Do you guys, do, do, are they able to move between terminals? I mean, I, I mean, if someone's long haul, it probably doesn't matter where they live, but if they want to move to Winnipeg <laughs> for some reason or another and they're, they started off here, is, are they able to do that kind of stuff? Yeah, or? like, there are, tra like, I, I don't want to say they're transfers, but, right. you know, when you're moving to Winnipeg, you, you've talked to your fleet manager, right? Yeah. And then your fleet manager will then send a request. Okay. This this driver's looking to move to Winnipeg. Yeah. And then um, that driver just applies to the particular run that they're interested right. in to be awarded that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes for family reasons, family might want to move out there and <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to go by both doors anyway, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty cool. So these award-winning drivers, so how do you recognize your drivers? I know you have award-winning drivers. Some of them are recognized from outside associations. What's the recognition process like for here? You're, you talked about recognizing some of these drivers. When am I going to start being recognized? And do I have to wait till I've got a million miles? Will I be patted on the back just for bringing the truck back in one piece? Like, when does it start? No, like it starts pretty much from the get-go, Yeah. Right? Right? Like, you know, there's the Safe Rewards Driving Program that we have right. in place. Um, once you hit a threshold, um, there is a, a monetary reward to right. that, okay. meaning an extra per mile or whatever. Right. Um, when you get to, I think it's 250 or maybe 500,000, I'm not 100% sure, um, you're awarded um, an actual gift. Oh, okay. Um, when you're in the terminal... Um, it's announced. Everybody stops what they're doing. Right, right. Celebrates you like claps right, like crazy. Right, yeah. We have our wall of fame, yeah. where you get a plaque with your name and you get to put it where you want in the oh, wall nice. of, of fame. Nice. And so that is quickly filling up. Yeah. Yeah. So right. you know, for for those things, and yeah, you know, uh, Trina. Who, who yeah, 2023 yep. OTA. Looking over my Looking shoulder, over here. shoulder here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Yep. We've had, we've definitely had a few um, being awarded from outside carriers yeah. or outside uh, associations. associations. Mm -hmm. And that's nice to see as yeah. well because, again, that is another way that these drivers, considering coming to Bison, yeah. you know, can see, yes, what they're saying is, is true. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the benefits before I let you go. Um, especially more women coming in the industry like to have a pet along. They look at it as security and companionship. Mm -hmm. Do you have things like pet policies yes. and all of that yep. stuff? And maybe you just want to talk about a few of the yep. highlighted we, ones there. Absolutely. So definitely there is a pet policy. Um, you know, there's just some forms that you fill out. There is a one-time fee. I believe mm. it's $250. Um, and that allows you to have your um, pet in the vehicle. Okay. Um, but, I mean, when your pet is in the vehicle, it's your responsibility. Like, mm. you know, if you're in the yard here and you let the dog out to do its business, yeah. pick up the business. Yeah, pick up the, the business. Yard. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if you, summertime, and your kids are on vacation, you want to bring, you know, your oldest child with you yeah. when you're out. You, there's the uh, policy that you just pay for that you fill out um, to allow that guest to be traveling with yeah. you for that period of time. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we really want to try and make it as comfortable as we can. <coughs> um, and for the for the, you to feel as safe as you can. So, as you said, some mm -hmm. of the uh, women drivers like to have that pet beside yep. them. Um, you know, but so does everybody yeah. Well, I never had pets beside me, but, you know, <laughs> I see a lot of them now and more women I see with a dog, even if it's just for companionship, not the dogs are usually, I'm not sure they're going to be so secure there here, but you know, it's, it's, it's good for them to have them. They seem to en enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, I never, I never worried about that, but it is good to know that those, I know um, I'm always encouraging people in this industry to get their family involved. So having things like a rider policy 
where you can bring somebody along for a week or something like that and and just let them see what your life is like and understand it it makes it easier yeah trust me it makes it easier the other way yeah uh, and know. i mean the two things two times a, a year so in the summertime um they do a barbecue yeah. family barbecue well it's for everybody yeah owner ops company drivers as well as us here in the office yeah. um there is an um a gala in april yeah. again everybody's invited right it's yeah. not just office people yeah. everybody else no it's yeah. everybody so again you are feeling like you're part of the company yeah. Yeah. because if we don't have good quality drivers then none of us would be in our Right. We wouldn't be in this building. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You guys right. all be hanging out outside. That's great. Um, I know you're not taking on new people right now, but I do get a lot of questions about uh, immig immigrants coming here. Where should they apply if they're – I know that's not necessarily your area, but – Our Winnipeg location does look after the uh, that um, program. Okay, so someone can apply Yeah, somebody is new there. to Canada um, but does have experience driving in their own yeah. country. Um you know, then they can they can apply into the Winnipeg okay. location. All right, good. Yeah. And then they've got the finishing program and all that there, which will. Yep, and we have it here too. Um, it's all over, but it's for new drivers, right? Yeah, that's that's newly licensed yeah. drivers, and you also have to be able to cross the border okay. to be part of that program. So, where do you want people to go to find out about these crazy jobs? To I'm sending them to BisonDriving.com. Is that where I should? That send them? is exactly <laughs> right. And so you're the one actually or, putting them up, going, "Hey, we need yeah. three more in Mississauga." Or, or if you're in Mississauga, you can always stop in our terminal, five eight four zero Shaws and Drive. Yeah, come and see the terminal. Come it's pretty in. cool. And uh, you know, if I'm available, I'm not on the phone. I'll come out and talk with you for Just sure. Just ask for the Shermanator. Just ask for the Shermanator. <laughs> How did you get that name? Remind remind everybody how you got that name, if you if you can. <laughs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> Just to say, it was one summer in my youth. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs>